what strange events have gotten swept under the rug like they didn't even happen. The Clinton administration funded nationwide fiber optic cable. The cable companies took the money, then disappeared it in all their late 90s corporate consolidations. Paid for fiber optic cable, did not get it. A slightly frivolous example, after Madonna and Britney Spears kissed at some award ceremony in the early 00s, Beyonce made some comments at the time which could be construed as mildly homophobic, citing her religious beliefs. More or less any mention of this has been scrubbed off the internet now and it's quite difficult to find details of it. Her PR team worked overtime on that one. There was a huge scandal involving the UK foster care system. Social workers were getting paid more for each child they placed in foster care. This resulted in 100 slash 1000s of children being placed into foster care that didn't need to be. To this day there has been no uproar or anything about it, it got swelter under the rug and unless you was personally involved, myself, then you will more than likely not have any idea about it. In Williamstown PA over the course of six years there were five different men that barricaded their families into their houses. No relationship between these men, but all had the same reply when the police tried to save the rest of the family. It's not safe out there they are out there, no one understands it's not safe. All five were eventually shot in a standoff. Strange to happen once, but five times? Weird thing was no one seemed to think they could be related, just some whack job going nuts. Starting last summer there have been unidentified snipers taking out random cars on different parts of I-10 in New Orleans and nothing has come of it and nobody's really talking about it. I mean, gang and drug violence, neighborhood drive-bys and the occasional bourbon shooting are one thing to ignore, but interstate snipers? Nobody finds that interesting? It's still happening. In 2020, New Orleans saw an average of two interstate shootings per month, and on January 12, a news release from the New Orleans Police Department detailed more than 30 interstate shootings in the Crescent City in 2021. Six days later, they added four more victims to their list. Just before 3 p.m. on January 18, a Tuesday, a sniper killed 34-year-old Whitney Watts as she traveled eastbound on Interstate 10. Police realized something was amiss when the victim's black car crashed into a guardrail at the Crowder Boulevard exit in New Orleans East. The coroner found Whitney's assailant shot her multiple times. Earlier that morning, another I-10 gunshot hit a man on Michoud Boulevard, and the Saturday morning before that, January 15, the interstate sniper killed a 52-year-old man and wounded a 45-year-old woman on I-10 at Esplanade Avenue. Ironically, the United States' most infamous highway snipers killed only seven people far less than the multitude of attacks recounted here. If NOPD can connect even half of these shootings, the wound count of this new I-10 sniper surpasses that of the DC Beltway snipers. What the fuck? It's got to be the rate at which people are being killed cause when the DC snipers went on their rampage, it was all the news would talk about. A British extortionist figured out an angle on picking up ransom money a couple decades ago. He went to seven or eight banks and set up accounts with ATM cards under false names. Then he waited a few years until there was no possibility that any of the tellers would recall what he looked like. Then he poisoned baby food and pet food and put it on store shelves and notified the manufacturers where it was. He demanded money to stop doing it. He demanded that the ransom be paid into the aforementioned bank accounts and he would drive around the county doing quick withdrawals, while wearing a motorcycle helmet to avoid camera identification, and disappearing before the cops would show up. There were far too many ATMs for the police to watch all of them at once. His main problem was that there was only a limited amount of cash that you could get out on an ATM at one time, and some of the cards had been closed for account inactivity between when he set them up and when he ran his scheme. He eventually got lazy and started doing his pickups closer and closer to home and ended up getting caught. They lost my SSN while I was a minor. I tried renting a car five years later as an adult and I was told my credit was too low. Lo and behold my identity was stolen in 2017 as a result of Equifax fuck up and 40k was taken out of various banks under my name. Edit, no, my credit report hasn't been fixed. There isn't really a way to fix it, all I can do is mitigate the damage and prove it was fraud, freeze credit report and enable fraud alert. If your parents opened a savings account for you as a child, the big three credit unions have your SSN info, and they can lose it. Edit 2. The thief used my SSN to open a fraudulent account with Experian and Equifax. After I purged their info and replaced it with my own, I started receiving court summons and legal inquiries about paying off the loans. System is a joke. In my hometown, the police chief was accused of having sexual relations with an underage girl. The father of the girl was one of the officers on the force. He was later found dead near the property of the chief. People believe he was there to confront the chief about the relations. 
9-11 happened, and the attention of the public got focused on the nation's tragedy. He is now the mayor. The Las Vegas shooting. The worst mass shooting in America's history. Dozens dead. Hundreds injured. No one has any idea why this random dude stockpiled weapons and went on a mass murder spree. Or why he ended when he did. We all just collectively when I guess we'll never know and then forgot about it. Everyone wants answers, but sometimes it's no easy task to find. There's things unfortunately we'll never know. If he had documented head trauma for example, that could be a reason for why he did what he did. But a lot of people don't like that answer, it's not satisfactory. That's why so many conspiracy theories are made. People don't get the answers they want, so they make it up. One man couldn't possibly be responsible, it was multiple shooters, it was a massive terrorist attack, that kind of BS. I can't remember exactly what the narrative was people were making up. But I hate it when people think they know more than the actual investigators. Unfortunately he shot himself and we'll never know. Edit wow, thank you for the awards. In other comments I got on the subject of mental health, and making it acceptable, accessible and affordable. Now obviously there is no way for us to say that if the Vegas shooter, or any other mass shooter, got help, that it could have prevented the shooting. It's complicated and we don't have the answers for it. But it's a good start, along with sensible gun control would be good as well. Fortunately culture is beginning to shift so it's a good start. Also to the YouTube internet investigators down there chiming off, I will not acknowledge you further than this. Unless you physically investigated the shooter's room and home s? Sat through the hours of hotel video footage, personally interviewed friends and family acquainted with the shooter, and combed through the mountain of background information that investigators did or are an expert with a degree in physics and understands how sound travels, you have absolutely zero truth behind your claims. You are simply just rehearsing a script from a terrible writer, that is all. The Phoenix Lights. My whole immediate family and tons of people on the street we lived on saw the aircraft come overhead. We all stood there speechless and terrified until it passed then the whole block freaked out. Nobody will ever convince me it was flares. We all saw the outline and structure of the craft clearly. It was so big and slow it was amazing it was staying in the air. My hair still stands on end even thinking about it right now. I was 10 when this happened and my father was a letter carrier with USPS. This was so scary to me. I remember begging my dad to quit. They all wore gloves and masks, but the mail must be delivered, so there was no break in service. Then just one day they stopped wearing gloves and masks, and he said that everything was okay. I asked if the guy who did it was in jail and when he said no, I pleaded with him to still wear the gloves. I don't think he did, though. I had so many nightmares I never told my parents about, and I still have them every couple of years. Sometimes when I bring this event up to people my age, they don't even remember what I'm talking about. It's crazy how one day we all just dropped it. 